The National Toy Hall of Fame recognizes classic toys that deserve elevation to the highest tier of the world of toys and games. And every November, we pick three or four based on thousands of nominations from the public to earn that special honor. The other nine pretty easily. Yeah. This year's nominees include everything from card games like Phase 10 and Pokemon cards to classics like My Little Pony to the trampoline to all sorts of things that characterize play in all its dimensions. Generic balloon, blown up by yours truly. <laughs> Every year we receive thousands of nominations. We look at those for three big criteria. One is longevity. These are toys that at least have been on the market for 20 years, so kids and their parents could both have grown up playing with them. Second, these are toys that everyone can recognize. Even if you never had a radio flyer wagon or a teddy bear, you know exactly what they were. And third, these are toys that have great play value. Learning, creativity, discovery, socialization, activity. We winnow down all those thousands of nominations into the 12 that we judge best meet those criteria. We then send those out to a panel. We call it the National Advisory Selection Committees. They're a group of experts on child development and toys and history, and they're kind of the little academy in our academy awards. Their finalists that they propose are the ones that then we follow for what actually gets inducted that year. Right hand on red. Put this hand on red. Can you do it? Oh, that's a tricky one. So one of the things that the National Toy Hall of Fame tries to prove is that it's not necessarily about the top 10 or the hot 10 toys for the holiday season that are worth adding to a child's collection of toys and games. It's worth remembering that they're ones that have stood the test of time, that generation after generation have enjoyed. Those are often toys and games that are really kind of open-ended, that allow a lot of latitude, a lot of room for a child's imagination to take part. So think of an Etch-a-Sketch or Crayola crayons or a dollhouse. There's so much that a child brings to those toys and that make them so repeatable.
Well, the screens are really taking away their good times. I would say our times were much better without screen because we were more observant of what is going on in our daily lives and that's how it helped us to think of our, like it increases our imagination capacity. While these kids, they only depend on, you know, internet, even they, you tell them to write something, they depend on internet, like you know, searching something randomly and copy pasting it and writing it, but we are more imaginative than them.